from the new york times the inauguration of the president of the southern confederacy february eighteenth eighteen sixty one front page inaugural address of president davis animated debate in the peace conference and the policy and purposes of secession washington monday february eighteenth the peace conference were in session today upwards of five hours the debate was the most animated of any since the commencement of the convention the two reports from the committee were under consideration the propositions respecting the territories establishing or permitting slavery south of thirty six degrees thirty minutes were posed earnestly by gentlemen from new york massachusetts new hampshire ohio illinois and wisconsin Messrs. Tyler and Guthrie are leading advocates of the majority report and earnestly urged upon the convention immediate and direct action. They object decidedly to the proposition of Mr. Field of New York for a national convention on the ground that before such a convention can be held unless some compromise be offered or adopted, all the border states will go out of the Union and will join the Southern Confederacy, binding themselves to that organization so strongly that the convention will be powerless to effect a reorganization. The tone of Jefferson Davis's speech is alluded to by them to substantiate the determination declared by the states which go out, never to reunite with the North. A majority of Pennsylvanians, and some from all the northern states, it is now thought, will accept the majority report, which, with all the border state compromisers, will secure its adoption by a close vote. A canvas this morning of the conference shows only about half a dozen majority in its favor. The slave state representatives say that its adoption under such circumstances and by such a vote will be of no avail and will not be accepted as settlement, as it will not be an expression of the wishes of the free states. Several gentlemen have argued these points at length. The feasibility and constitutionality of the propositions in the report were discussed at considerable length. The anti-compromisers, headed by Messrs. Field and Notes of New York, Boutwell and Allen of Massachusetts, and one Illinois man, as earnestly met these arguments. They object to a direct compromise, as being of no binding authority, and unlikely to receive any sanction from Congress as the session is so nearly closed. They also object to them upon principle and under threats, and to amendments to the Constitution by such process, and without careful deliberation. They cannot see in them any remedy for existing difficulties, and only a problematic prevention of further complications and troubles. The same difficulties will exist after their adoption as now, and even with these concessions granted, the border slave states will not consent to, no permit, any remedy for the frauds perpetrated by seceding states upon the federal government. The speech of Jefferson Davis alluded to, published this morning, amounts in their estimation to a declaration of war, and yet gentlemen propose that they should themselves do nothing about it. While the discussion was very spirited, the most amicable feelings were displayed on all sides. Mr. Tyler asked some of the anti-compromisers today in a private conversation if they would yield the Virginia proposition, the Crittenden compromise, or anything against the spirit of the Chicago platform, or if direct compromise would not suit them as well as a national convention. He received a negative answer. He is said to have replied that if they maintain that position throughout this week without action in the right direction for a settlement, there would no longer be any hope of adjustment and they must prepare to recognize the consequences or involve the country in civil war. He has not, he says, quite given up all hope yet. A proposition was to be made for evening sessions this week. Boutwell of Massachusetts made a long and eloquent speech today in convention against all compromise, said to be the most elaborate naval speech yet delivered. It attracted much attention and drew forth the debate which occupied the convention all day. He went so far as to advise the border states, as suggested by Soames of Maine, in his recent speech in the House, of the necessity of conciliating and agreeing with the North for their own safety. Guthrie afterwards approached Messrs. Boutwell, Allen, Field, and Crowenshield, and said he did not stand upon his proposition, nor did Kentucky demand creditons or any particular measure as an alternative, asking what they would give and intimating that they would agree to anything which presented a basis of adjustment. They replied, offering a national convention. They think this proposition rapidly gaining in favor, and express the belief that now no other can pass. Jefferson Davis's speech at Montgomery attracts considerable attention. His braggadocia and threats are the subject of ridicule and excite no fear here. It is only tending to strengthen the anti-compromise feeling. His inaugural address, or that part of it which is received here tonight, but not yet made public, I learn from private sources, takes strong ground against reconstruction and compromise, and partakes more of the air of a military dictator than the head of a peaceful republic. The border state men denounce Davis and his bombast without stint.